but are cleared of counts related to the deaths of their patients. One of the problems we had with prosecuting this case is that most Americans, rightfully so, hold doctors on a And they don't hold drug addicts in very high regard at all. So to convince your average American that a doctor is not really a savior in a white coat, he or she is no different than a street drug dealer. And that it's their fault that these addicts are in this condition, or it's their fault that this addict died. It's very difficult to do. Very difficult to do. Almost two years after the shutdown of the clinics, the state of Florida implements a drug monitoring program and tightens regulations around the sale of oxycodone. And the overdose death rates begin to decline. One person who survives his addiction is Steve Mazza. After the birth of his daughter, Mazza decides he needs to get off the pills. One day, he realizes he has a choice. I could just get on this bus and go right down to South County and ring the doorbell and tell them, look, I'm going to kill myself if you don't help me. So that's what I did. With a lot of intensive treatment at the hospital and support from the Lord's Place, a social service organization in Lake Worth, Mazza now has a full-time job as head of catering for the agency. And I never thought I would have a decent paying job paying taxes again and, and have my daughter not her mom. Up north in eastern Kentucky, the legacy of the Florida pain clinics continue to be felt. Now there's a new drug of choice, heroin. We never had a heroin problem in this region uh, prior to the prescription pill uh, epidemic. Uh, heroin just wasn't a drug that the Appalachian region uh, was suffering from for whatever reason. But once the uh, opioids were introduced to this population through the diversion of prescription medication, and now that source is becoming uh, very much tougher for them to get, we're seeing the influx of heroin, which is much more devastating. As people look back on the short but catastrophic episode of Chris and Jeff George, everyone agrees that there was just one thing behind it all. I think what we saw was that greed just overcame everyone. It overcame their their sense of morality, their sense of right and wrong, their sense of how we treat a fellow human being. And the fact of the matter is, is that they were getting a lot of money, and yet they were operating day to day. Nobody came in, nobody shut them down. So the greed brought forth this amazing sense of immorality, and it made them feel as though they could do no wrong.